Minecraft, released in 2009, it quickly became a global phenomenon thanks to its open-ended gameplay. You can collect, transform and rearrange blocks in infinite ways, limited only by your own imagination. It is like Lego, except you don't have to sell a kidney to afford all the pieces you need. And something that really helped Minecraft to explode was YouTube. Creators turned their gameplay experiences into entertainment for millions, forming a near symbiotic relationship with the game's success. Even now, Minecraft's popularity remains strong. Heck, there's even a movie on the way, though expectations for this one seem to be quite low. What the? And in game development, recreating Minecraft has become a popular project for aspiring developers. At first glance, it seems quite simple, with its blocky graphics and simplistic art style, but it serves as an introduction to key programming concepts like procedural terrain generation, big game worlds, voxel manipulation and graphics optimizations in general. So I decided to make a version of my own in Pygame. When you think of Pygame, you probably think of 2D games. I have seen some Minecraft inspired platformers or isometric games, but I wanted to go for something in between. A version with 2D elements presented in a way that feels somewhat like 3D. So my goal is to create a 2.5D version of Minecraft using Pygame, sticking to its limitations without relying on external libraries like Numba or OpenGL. To start I needed a world made of blocks. Using simple python lists I stacked layers to represent the three dimensions. The innermost lists represent the x coordinate, which are inside other lists for the y dimension, which are also inside the outermost lists for the z axis. An easier way to think of my approach is that the x and y coordinates represent tile map layers where each tile corresponds to a voxel or block, and the layers are then stacked in the z-direction. Using simple sine waves I generate rolling terrains with hills and valleys. Water fills the lower areas and random trees add a bit of life to the landscape. Later on one could create a better world generator, but this will suffice for now. After generating the simple world I want to pre-render all the layers so that I don't have to render each voxel separately every frame, which will cause substantial performance issues. So I created a new list to store the surfaces, each one with the size of the world in width and height multiplied by 16, the size of the voxels in pixels. Then I go over each XY position and render the corresponding voxel to the layer. I also used black as the color key for transparency. Of course, a world isn't much fun without a player, so I created a player class to handle movement and collisions. The player stays fixed at the center of the screen while the world moves around him. I gave the player a Jack Black inspired look, because Jack Black is awesome. I am Steve. Will it save the Minecraft movie? Probably not, but at least he's a fun guy. I made a simple camera that's used to displace the layers in the opposite direction when rendering the layers on the screen. This will then follow the player around. On screen now you can see the result. A simple but functional voxel world. But it is still completely flat. You simply cannot distinguish between the different layers. To achieve the 2.5D perspective I scaled layers based on their distance from the camera. Farther layers appear smaller and are drawn first while closer layers are larger and overlap them. This is all it takes to create the illusion of depth without actually rendering in 2D. For small worlds you can simply scale the entire layers, but as I increased the size of the world I had some performance issues. To fix this I used the subsurface function from Pygame to select only the portion of the layer that will be visible on the screen. By scaling down the selected region I maintained the depth effect without overloading the system. The result is a more smooth and responsive game, even with larger maps. So far we have a voxel based world to explore, but there is no mining nor crafting yet. The key aspect of removing and placing blocks is determining the position in the world that the player is trying to select. My solution was to identify the position on the player's layer where the mouse pointer hovers and through movements up and down within the region of that block, select blocks on layers farther back or on the front along the z-axis. 
If a block exists in this selected position, the player can remove it. If there is no block but there is a neighboring block on one of the six adjacent faces, the player can place a block in that position. A simple interface at the bottom of the screen shows the count of collected blocks and which one is selected for placement. Now the player can collect blocks from the map and build some structures with the collected blocks. It's far from Minecraft's level of crafting, but you can already make your own little dirt house. For now I will stop here, but I believe with a few more tricks we could make this prototype even more three-dimensional, but that's an idea for a future video. Recreating Minecraft in 2.5D isn't about making a game, I'm not even sure you could call it a game yet, it's just a prototype. It is more about the challenge, pushing myself to think creatively and problem solve. If you have been inspired to try something similar, I'd love to see what you came up with. Don't forget to like, subscribe and all of that good stuff. Thanks for watching and until the next time.